Welcome to ECCB Connects. On this episode, we discuss innovation and sustainability in the Caribbean tourism product and speak with Sam Raphael of Jungle Bay, Dominica, about what's required to take our industry to the next level. Stay connected with us. We'll share more with you after the break. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank is rolling out DCash, the next step in the evolution of the EC dollar. Use DCash to send and receive money to and from friends and family. Make payments directly from your smart device. Make payments from wherever you are. Download the app from the Google Play or Apple Store and sign up or visit DCashEC.com for more information. The future of the EC dollar is digital. Let's make history together. Sam, welcome to ECCB Connects. Thank you. Pleasure and good day to you too. It's a pleasure having you here today to discuss with us um, Jungle Bay Resort, a world-renowned resort out of Dominica, and speaking specifically about sustainability in the Caribbean tourism product. So speak to us about Jungle Bay Resort, that wonderful product. Well, Jungle Bay, Dominica, I almost don't like to call it a resort because it's sort of a an unusual place, huh? but it's certainly a resort for wellness and ecotourism. Uh, and it's a, a unique to the Caribbean brand. As you know, a traditional brand in the Caribbean is more geared towards the you know, sun, sand, sea, and whatever else that goes with that. And Dominica, um, unfortunately back then, but I think fortunately for this island, we, we are blessed with having a rainforest island with more rainfall and we don't have a lot of flat areas, it's volcanic sand, it's black, it's not white sandy beaches. So traditionally Dominica was viewed as an island that, you know, maybe it wasn't the best thing for tourism. Uh, and un you know, unfortunately we lost our banana trade, which we were largely dependent on sometime in the early nineties. And as a result of that, tourism has become more and more an important part of the economy. Now we started Jungle Bay in the mid nineties and wanted to, develop for Dominica or to help develop uh, a unique replicable model for tourism that fit into what Dominica is and what Dominica can be. Uh, we have, what we have is, you know, just nature, unspoiled, lots of waterfalls, great trails for hiking, the coastline we have year round, you know, resident whales and so on. So basically a tourism that would focus on people enjoying the natural environment. Uh, so this is what Jungle Bay is. We are a nature-based tourism facility. We have uh, 89 rooms. This is a, this, this property. Our main features are our spa, which we do a lot of arom aromatherapy in. Uh, and uh, you've got yoga studios, two of the, maybe the largest yoga studios in the Caribbean. So we've got a strong wellness component. And then the rest of the property is just teeming with fruit trees and for nature walks. And, you know, it's sort of just an extension of what Dominica has to offer, which is great hiking, uh, hot springs and that sort of thing. So this is the product that we've sort of uh, developed uh, along with uh, a strong commitment to uh, the local community, because this is something important. We'll probably talk about that a little later. This is as a result of, of uh, necessity and as a result of really the plan. I'm a Caribbean person. I, of course, approach tourism or my community differently than someone coming in to develop something uh, in the community. The choice that a traditional developer from outside had given the Caribbean uh, for decades is, you know, you, you allow us to destroy your natural environment to bring quote, development and jobs uh, to your people. And as one of those people, I kind of look at it differently. We want jobs, but we also want our natural environment. We, know we need it. So we had to develop a tourism product in Dominica that was, you know, in, in dovetailed, that aligned with the preservation of the natural environment so that we can preserve the very thing that make us unique uh, we can utilize it on a daily basis for people to enjoy, to see, to appreciate, and then it will be with us forever to pre provide a livelihood for our children in the future. So uh, a type of tourism that is based on 
the respect and preservation and enjoyment of the natural environment. So this is basically what we are. We do it in a way that we don't take away from your luxurious experience. So if you want AC, we got AC, but most people like to leave the beautiful windows open. And you know, we pamper you, but we beat you up during the day when we take you to the boiling lake and we take you hiking. So you push your limits. Uh, and we think that coming out of this era, especially, we were very successful in the past, I must say, but coming out of this, you know, COVID restrictive area where the, the world has gone through, you know, such a terrible pandemic, I think that this is the direction in which the world will be leading to. And so we're looking forward to not just us, but the other properties in Dominica that follow along that path. So you spoke about what taking what you have already and, and using it, natural resources. Why is sustainability, this type of sustainability, so important in our region in general? Well, one, it's a tremendous opportunity we have to differentiate ourselves from the rest of the pack. And so I think most people in the progressive world would gravitate towards an experience that could allow them to enjoy nature in a way that they're not going to be destructive. So we do believe that there's a bigger market for that, and that market is going to be growing as opposed to people who really don't care about the natural environment, who just really want to lay out in the sun and drink rum punches or whatever. Uh, and so we think that that's the way of the future uh, for tourism in the Caribbean. Of course, Dominica is a unique island, and the details of the model that we use for Dominica may be different than what we use in St. Vincent or Grenada or St. Kitts, et cetera. But you know, at the end of the day, I think all these islands offer their unique features and it should be a common thread that one, we try to use what the islands have to differentiate ourselves from each other and from places around the world, other places around the world to make us more competitive. And also it now becomes a tool for really the wealth creation and empowerment of the people. And this is something that we in the Caribbean, we've had tourism, okay, let's say in some places 50 years, some places 100 years, and people complain that they're not feeling it improving their lives. You know, your mother still wants you to go and study to be a doctor, an engineer, and a lawyer, but they don't say go and study to, you know, work in a hotel because that's sort of a fallback. But we all know in hospitality, we can have tremendous careers and opportunities. So this has been the main, you know, economic driver of the region. I just think we need to bring it in sync to where the people can really realize the potential. Through that, it's about you know, differentiating and, and promoting unique features. And I think this is a, a clear opportunity. It'll be different in all instances, but that theme will continue. I think you've highlighted such an important um, point in terms of taking what we have that's already there and existing and perfecting it um, so that people want to come and enjoy this. They see the peculiarities of whichever island they're visiting and not only offering something to, to our tourists and our visitors, but then having the people, the members of the community who actually live there benefit and, and, and take hold of, of, of these opportunities. So talk to us more about how Jungle Bay has maintained or created that balance between offering and attracting visitors, but yet including members of the community in, in, in this movement. Uh, this is an interesting dance. It's not, it, it, it sounds, sexier than it is because it, it involves a lot of work because uh, dealing with a community and um, that is moving in a certain direction culturally and used to certain things and not used to certain things uh, when you're seeking to modify even behavior to some extent to where you know you want to involve the community you want them to come and and to, to earn a livelihood, but they're going to have to fine tune and tweak things so that it can suit you know, what the international market wants. So sometimes that can be a bit challenging, but I can tell you in our case, we started from construction. You know, we, we want to use the natural materials that we had around. So you see a lot of wood. Around the property, you'll see a lot of stone. So the Jungle Bay is built from wood and stone and all the stone comes from the site. And we take the stones and the local artisans, we teach them how to cut the stones and make these beautiful, you know, kind of antique looking buildings. Gets to be a little expensive, but it's, you know, the type of, of construction that puts money back in the community. It's very labor intensive. So from that juncture, and we start working with the construction workers and training them so that by the time the hotel opened, 
the people who were ready. A lot of these guys became tour guides. They worked in a maintenance department. They worked throughout the hotel. There's a sense of ownership on their part connection. because they're, they're the ones the connection and ability. Likewise, the community by extension, even during construction, we started working with them, whether folks that fish, whether folks that farm. Now, I can see it makes common sense you know, to incorporate the farmers as part of your supply chain. But if your farmers are not used to producing a, a certain level of quality, a certain consistency, don't understand pricing, it's very difficult to all of a sudden just transition them so that they uh, can begin to provide to the hotel. At the same time, the hotel, we can't provide our guests with excuses. Sure, we're a community tourism private, but we can't say, oh, we don't have this today, we don't have that because the community doesn't have that. So it's sometimes very difficult to get the community to at the level where they can perform and produce for the hotel so that the hotel can still be a world-class operation. You've connected um, some of the dots that the tourism industry on its own doesn't stand alone. It, it, you know, it requires input from other sectors. And even, even if not directly in tourism, the opportunities for other business owners, other entrepreneurs to, to contribute to this effort and they can themselves grow. Um, from this. Now, we, we, we a- sometimes say in the Caribbean, tourism is everybody's business, but we haven't made a concerted effort to really, really, really make it everybody's business and to give everybody a piece of the pie, or at least let everybody come in for a piece of the pie. And I think this is where we need to take it going forward to make it everybody's business more and more. So what do you think is required to really um, get that energy um, behind that sort of effort. We, tourism has been something that's part of our lifeline for, for decades in the Caribbean. Every island, every island is involved. Every, we all know somebody who works or is connected to the tourism industry. What, what is required to take us to that next level? Well, the reality is going to help do that because when we reflect other, other areas, so that matter, tropical places in Asia, where you have you know, very good airlift because you've got economies of scale, you've got low wage scales and so on. And they're becoming the new interesting tropical destinations. And, you know, if we want to offer a generic product, we're going to have some problems with that because the cruise ship is going to be able to do it more cheaply. Larger destinations, certainly even in the Americas are going to be able to do it more cheaply. Asia is going to be able to do it more efficiently. And we, we now, we're in a situation, we've been eating off of the fat of our past, and we were, haven't really been looking at the future and seeing what's coming. But unless we pivot, and pivot as soon as we can, to a more high value experience where we tie in, you know, the unique features, we're going to run into some problems because, at, you know, you're going to, we, our market is going to erode, as has been happening. And so I think this is a good opportunity, again, coming off of this COVID break. I said it's been terrible, but it presents a tremendous opportunity to now when we go back to market, to go back with a product that more reflects the possibilities of us having a new, renewed, unique product than going back to just the same way we did and we used to be successful in the past. Well. You know what, because you were successful in the past doesn't mean that you're going to be successful in the future because you've got this element called global competition that is nipping at your heels. So you underscored the point there. I mean, just how important innovation and thinking outside the box is important for any business, but especially for if for the tourism product, if we're going to be attractive and different to other offerings out there. So Sam, as we as we reflect uh, and um, think about the next phase of tourism for our region, what are your final words to us? I'm very optimistic. I'm very optimistic because I don't think we're going to just continue as we had been in the past. And I'm very optimistic because I know that there are tremendous opportunities that are before us. These islands are well placed geographically. We have a strong you know, cultural well that we can draw on. We've got, we are resilient people. Uh, we've got people that I think have achieved, you know, we, we, we've been outboxing our size for such a long time. And I think when we've refocused that energy, we just really needed to come to a point 
where we stop, you know, and, and pay attention and, and come again, as we say in, in the region. And I think that this is the time now. I hope it's the time now that we, it's one of those moments, one of those watershed moments post COVID where we're getting back out again as a region. And I think now for the next decade, we're going to start transitioning tourism to a more sustainable way, to something that reflects the heritage and culture of these islands. And I think the response from the marketplace is gonna be very, very strong. People are gonna to want to experience these things. We've offered them reggae, we offer calypso, we offer, we offer more fun and entertainment and interesting things to the world than any other region. And I think we're gonna incorporate that. And with this, I, I, I see uh, including some of the, the economic factors that's gonna make us more efficient. Uh, you know, I, I think the future is bright. So I look forward to however long I'm here uh, to observing and contributing to and watching and encouraging the next generation of our young Caribbean people. Follow my footsteps. You, you can do it. You know, I, was, I wasn't born from a family that, that came from wealth, you know. And, and so I would encourage the young people, you don't have to own a hotel, but there are many other areas in tourism along the supply chain that you can really make your mark and make your contribution. Uh, and so I think that, that, uh, that our future is bright and I look forward for it, but we got to put in the work. So thank you so much to ECCB. I know that you guys are going to do your part, which is what you're doing now to raise the level of consciousness and raise the awareness and to support, you know, institutions that support the, the development of sustainable tourism in the future. And just happy to be a small part of it. Sam, thank you so much for speaking with us on ECCB Connects. Great. Thank you. We now present, Did You Know? Did you know that the backing ratio refers to the extent to which a currency is backed by foreign reserves? The ECCB agreement mandates that our EC currency maintain a backing ratio of no less than 60%. We've come to the end of this week's episode of ECCB Connects. Thanks for watching and be sure to join us next week for another program when we share with you who we are, what we do, and how we serve you.